Hi everyone, many of you were asking how to take an output image from Blender. Once you have a 3D model, you are working on something, how to save it as an image that you can place in a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation. So it is very easy to do. So it is called rendering. So let me show you that quickly. Okay. So first here I have a new project. Here you can see a cube is there. By default, there will be a light source. Here you can see this is a camera. Okay. So I'll delete everything so that I'll explain everything one by one. Let me press delete. So I'll add a cube quickly. Go to add mesh cube. Now we have a cube. Okay. So on the right top side, you can see four circles representing different preview modes. I'll explain all the basics in another video. Now let's focus only taking an output. How to take an image of this cube. So first we need to make sure that there is enough lighting. Okay. So for this cube, I'll add a material on the right side. Here you can material, click on new and there is a material. Click on base color and change the color. Now you don't see any color. You need to switch to material preview mode. Let's add a light shift a light area. Here you can see a light has been added. It is inside the cube. So simply select the move tool. You will see this axis move it up like that and scale it up. We need more area for the light. Uh, so how this light works? It is adding light parallelly in this direction, right? So if we need more light throughout, we need to increase the size of the light. So select this scale tool and left click on the circle and move it up. Okay. Now go to fourth preview mode here, which will show you how everything will look like finally, which will appear inside the camera. Okay. So let's increase the light power. Go to light properties here. Make sure that light is selected here. Increase the light power to higher value 2000 for example. Now next we need a camera. So Blender works same way how photography works. We have a camera. We look through the camera. We capture an image. So let's add a camera shift a camera. When you open a new project, there will be a camera. Okay. But we have deleted it. So camera also has been added at the center. Whenever you add a new object, it will be added at the center. So you can locate all the objects here in this uh, window, which is called outliner window. Here you can see camera again. I'll select move tool so that I can move the camera out. See now I'll move the camera here like that. Okay. Now we have a camera. Uh, if you click on this camera icon, you can see what camera is actually seeing in the scene. So that is what we will get as an output image, just like photography. We could have a landscape in front of us, but how we position the camera that will decide how the image will be right. So the camera is now aligning in this direction. So you will be getting this part whatever camera is seeing as an output image. Okay. So if you click on camera, this is how you will see. Let me zoom in using scroll wheel a little bit. Here you can see hand icon. You can pan the screen like this. And first let's lock the camera. Click on this lock button. Now camera is locked. Now you don't have to worry about camera. If you zoom in, zoom out, camera will remain there. Now I'll rotate the scenes. Still, you can see this rectangle representing camera. We are now always looking through the camera because camera is locked. So now click and pan the screen. Okay. Now we have a cube. Now let's quickly take an image of this cube. It is very easy. Simply go to render and click on a render image. So when you click on this render image button, camera captures an image. See, now you have an image. This you can save by going to image, click on save as go to a location that you want to save the image type image one you can also see here file format this is important if you click here you can see all other file formats by default png is the best option always go with png unless uh, you are specifically asked for any other file formats so png gives you best output quality click on save as image 
Now if you go to desktop, double click on the image, see you have an image file but you can see there is a gray background how to get rid of that for for getting an image with transparent background go to render properties here you can see a camera icon click on that scroll down you can find film this option is important click and expand that option and activate transparent now look at this change that is going to happen here when we activate transparent see now we have a checkerboard which means that background is transparent this is how we will need 3d objects with no background so that we can directly place inside ppt or way document click on render render image okay let's save this again i'll name it image 2 and click on save as image now let's look at the output image 2 see this doesn't have any background if you open the other one see it has a background gray background this one doesn't have any background it is actually transparent okay i have opened a word document let's go to insert image let's select both images that we have saved image one insert image image two see image two doesn't have any background image one has a background so this is how we need so now you have learned the very basics of a rendering a scene now let's learn um, more about rendering so this rendering is called real-time rendering which means we are using a rendering engine called ev which means in photography you could have an old uh, camera right you could have also a high-end digital camera the output from both will be different similarly by default we have a very fast camera it takes an image very fast it gives you decent enough quality but if you need very hyper realistic output with high quality you need to go to camera properties here and here you can see if you expand this window render engine click here and change that to cycles now you can see the output will be of much higher quality but it will take a lot of time i can talk about cycles in a different video but for now you can try rendering in both engine but when you render with cycles make sure that under render maximum samples uh, kept you know very low now it is 4000 i'll keep it 100 4000 means it will take 4000 samples to get a high resolution image high quality image but it will take a lot of time let's keep it 100 and also in general cycles is very slow compared to ev okay keep these points in mind so high quality output like art architecture visualization if you have devices if you have something which need to have high quality cover art illustrations so we more or less try to use cycles uh, but it will take more time also your computer will require you know much more better ram uh, processor graphics cards and so on let me open a new project file open okay let's render these three objects so let's go to render preview mode we don't have any lights i'll add a light shift a light area and move the light up see there is some lighting now but we need more size press s and scale it up and go to light properties here and change that to higher values see now we have enough lighting so lighting is also very important part of the workflow i'll create a dedicated video on lighting but for now simply focus on keeping an area lamp to fill you know light properly so now you can see there is enough light so let's add a camera shift a camera the camera is at the center i'll move it here and click on camera view zoom in lock the camera zoom out use this hand icon to pan and center the scene okay if you think this is good now you can go to render properties under film activate transparent now simply click render render image 
that's all that's how you render an image see now you can straight away use this in your research paper if you need high quality image as i said earlier change this render engine in render properties to cycles see now it takes more time to load but the quality is much better much much better so that's the difference and if i want this quality i'll change this to 100 under render you can see maximum samples and now let's click on render but this will take more time compared to ev ev is instant right so here you can see sample it has to reach 100 so it is taking time it is adding pixel by pixel to give you best output possible by default it will be 4000 so it means it will take you know 15 minutes 20 minutes or so uh, to complete all those sampling but most of the time 100 samples will give you best output okay so that's all about taking output image from blender i have covered everything and if you need to know anything other than this let me know in the comment box and also if you go to output properties here you can see resolution x and y which means which represent the size of the image height and width so if you change the height and width of the camera the output will change right that's the logic here you can see resolution x and y if you change this value for example let me change this to thousand now look at the camera and press enter see i'll unlock the camera zoom out see the camera size has changed so similarly the output image also will change so if you are preparing a cover art illustration you need to go to journal author guideline and find the value in centimeter or millimeter and go to uh, google and search for uh, centimeter to pixel converter and take those values here x and y here you can see percentage uh, resolution if i change this to 200 it will take the image in a double resolution which means this instead of thousand it will go to two thousand it will take more time but the idea is if you can even render test render with low resolution so that you will get an output faster with less resolution okay and here you can see the file format you can change the output location here as well okay so that's all i think this video summarizes everything about uh, taking an output image first make sure that the object is ready second make sure that all the materials and everything is ready then lighting then camera okay it is called rendering see you in the next video